Charles Perrow, Normal Accidents, Living with High-Risk Technologies, Updated Edition. Dive into the world of high-risk technologies with the summary of Charles Perrow's insightful book, Normal Accidents, Living with High-Risk Technologies, Updated Edition. This summary explores the complex systems that govern our modern world, and examines the intricacies of human-made accidents and disasters within these systems. Perrow discusses system accidents and their various facets, including design, equipment, procedure, operator, supplies, and environment a depose. Further, you'll discover the role of complexity and coupling, which play a significant part in determining the safety and reliability of various technologies such as nuclear reactors, chemical plants, dam structures, and aircraft. Understanding System Accidents The occurrence of system accidents is often unexpected and can be complex. These accidents arise from various errors in design, equipment, procedure, operator, supplies, and environment, commonly referred to as depose. Failure in any of these areas can cause the whole system to fail. This point is illustrated in a situation where a series of events led to a job interview being missed. A forgotten key, a friend with it, a neighbor's car that wouldn't start, and a bus driver's strike prevented a taxi from being available. The interdependent nature of all these systems resulted in the entire system, in this case, the interview, collapsing. Although such accidents may not always lead to a disastrous outcome, the implications in nuclear or chemical plants, for example, can be catastrophic. Complex versus linear systems Complex interactions and tight coupling can lead to catastrophic failures in systems. While complex systems have multiple interconnected components that may be hard to predict, they can be flexible enough to recover from component failures. Linear systems, on the other hand, are easy to predict, but a single component failure can trigger failure in other components, leading to catastrophe. The Grand Teton Dam collapse in 1976 is an example of how a tightly coupled linear system failed due to an insufficient solution to a known problem. Understanding the characteristics of different systems can help prevent disasters and improve functionality. Lessons learned from the Three Mile Island disaster The partial meltdown at the Three Mile Island TMI, nuclear power plant in 1979 provides a valuable lesson on the dangers of complexity and coupling in high-risk industries. The accident resulted from four small, seemingly unrelated failures that occurred within 13 seconds of each other, causing the core temperature and pressure to rise. Safety devices that were meant to prevent disasters sometimes fail or even contribute to the problem. The first failure occurred when water leakage caused a false signal to shut down the turbine used to generate power. The emergency water pumps were then inoperable due to valves that were closed, causing the core to overheat. An automatic safety device designed to relieve pressure got stuck and signaled that it had closed when it remained open. This failure led to the unstable core overheating the coolants, which created hydrogen gas. Despite the operators following safety protocols and reducing the cold water feed, the core remained uncovered, and a hydrogen bubble had formed. The lesson learned from TMI is that complex and tightly coupled systems, like those in high-risk industries, are unpredictable. Trivial failures can interact and cause a system accident. In such industries, safety devices are installed to prevent disasters, but they can sometimes become ineffective or even damage recovery. Thus, the system must always be monitored to ensure its safety. The Inherent Risks of Flying Flying has become increasingly safe over the years due to improved designs, safety measures, and a reduction in complexity and coupling. However, crashes will always occur due to the inherent complexity of flying. Even with the great improvements in air traffic safety, a single component failure caused by a maintenance error and design error in the slats led to hundreds of deaths in the DC-10 airplane crash. Flying, with its multitude of components and unpredictable interactions, will never be risk-free. The Hidden Risks of Petrochemical Plants The dangers of petrochemical plants are often overlooked, but they pose a significant risk. Similar to the nuclear industry, 
the petrochemical business also employs processes that can be hazardous. Although the industry has been in operation for over a century, accidents have occurred. While some are unpreventable, others, such as the Bhopal gas tragedy, are avoidable and can result in thousands of deaths due to negligence. Safety precautions are put in place, but it only takes a mixture of circumstances for a catastrophic system accident to occur. By understanding the potential dangers and risks associated with petrochemical plants, we can be better informed and take steps to prevent such tragedies from happening. The dangers of production pressure In a bid to meet up with deadlines and expectations, production pressures oftentimes lead to the creation of small errors that can cascade into something uncontrollable. This is similar to what happens with system accidents. While technology designed to aid safety and navigation can be helpful, they can actually increase the chances of accidents if not used correctly. A case in point is the BP oil tanker incident that was caused by the captain's poor judgment due to the pressure to deliver his cargo fast. Marine accidents caused by operators' haste and poor judgment are on the rise despite the adoption of collision avoidance systems and better communication between vessels. Companies and operators prioritize quicker delivery and lower expenses, oftentimes without considering the potential risks. This highlights the need for companies to put safety first and for operators to resist the urge to take unnecessary risks in a bid to meet up with production demands. Escaping death in space Despite design failures, the crew of Apollo 13 successfully improvised and simplified the system in order to escape death while en route to the moon. The Apollo 13 space mission was heading towards a moon landing when the crew faced a near-death experience due to design flaws despite the contributions of experts and billions of dollars in funding. One of the oxygen tanks on board had never been tested in space, which resulted in insulation burning up and the wires generating heat that caused an electrical discharge and emptied one of the tanks. The second tank started leaking, yet nothing on board notified the crew or mission control of the explosion of the tank. The warning lights themselves were misleading. The astronauts were only trained for failures of one or two components, whereas they were challenged with multiple failures. The crew saved themselves by simplifying and loosening the system. They squeezed themselves into the tiny landing module, which had been designed for two astronauts, and rationed their supplies. They conserved fuel by using the gravitational force of the moon's orbit to slingshot the craft back to Earth, simplified the operating procedures for re-entry, and discarded automated devices. They also abandoned their goal of a moon landing. This simplification gave them extra time and meant the system's coupling became looser and less prone to total collapse. Ultimately, their improvised life raft landed safely in the ocean, and the crew was rescued. The story of Apollo 13 teaches us the importance of simplicity and improvisation, especially in life-threatening situations. Despite the design and training failures, the crew of Apollo 13 managed to salvage the situation by simplifying their system and the situation. Intuition and Accidents on Mississippi River The collision of two ships on the Mississippi River has left many individuals wondering about the role intuition and hunches play in decision-making. While people often rely on intuition when making decisions, such judgments can sometimes be incorrect, leading to accidents like the non-collision course collisions that occurred with the Pisces and the Trade Master ships. These accidents can occur when individuals construct an understanding of the world that is divorced from reality. In the case of the two ships, assumptions and intuitions about the other ship's behavior caused them to collide, resulting in millions of dollars of damage. The book delves into assessing the risks associated with certain systems and what to do with such information to avoid accidents. Rationality and Risk Perception The book challenges the idea of rational thinking as the only way to understand risk and safety. The author argues that experts tend to overlook the social and cultural aspects of risk, while laypeople overestimate the risks associated with new technologies. Do you believe that rational thinking is the key to understanding risk and safety? Think again. In Risk and Culture, 
An Essay on the Selection of Technological and Environmental Dangers, author Mary Douglas challenges the widely accepted idea that risk assessment should focus solely on quantifiable data and mathematical models. Instead, the author argues that experts often overlook the social and cultural aspects of risk. According to Douglas, experts tend to use absolute rationality to assess risk, which means that they don't differentiate between deaths that occur under different circumstances. Whether it's 100,000 traffic accident deaths or a single catastrophe, everything is just a statistic. In contrast, laypeople tend to overestimate the risks associated with new technologies, focusing on rare disasters rather than historical records. Douglas goes on to explain how this difference in risk perception has broader social implications. For example, experts rate nuclear power as less risky than hazards like cars, guns, and alcohol, while the public sees it as riskier. Laypeople's risk perceptions are influenced by their memories of catastrophes and fear of the future, which makes it challenging for them to understand technical reports. In conclusion, the book challenges the idea that rational thinking is the only way to understand risk and safety. Instead, the author suggests that we need to take into account social and cultural factors when assessing risks. Experts need to recognize the limitations of their models, while laypeople need to learn more about technical reports. Ultimately, the book motivates us to seek a better understanding of risk and safety, avoiding the pitfalls of both absolute rationality and dread risk. Balancing Risks and Benefits The book discusses how to balance the risks and benefits of complex systems such as dams, universities, nuclear plants, and chemical production. Linear systems with tight coupling should be centralized to provide an immediate response prescribed in advance by a central authority. Complex systems with loose coupling should be decentralized to allow operators to diagnose and analyze unexpected situations. Complex interactive and tightly coupled systems require both centralization and decentralization. The catastrophic potential of a technology should be assessed to determine whether it should be improved, restricted, or abandoned altogether. Technologies with low to medium catastrophic potential should be used with steps to improve their safety. On the other hand, technologies with substantial catastrophic potential but lack of viable alternatives should be restricted. Lastly, nuclear power and nuclear weapons should be abandoned. Having delved into the intricate domains of high-risk technologies, the summary of Charles Perrault's Normal Accidents, Living with High-Risk Technologies, Updated Edition, underscores the need for a balanced approach towards centralization and decentralization, while taking safety precautions into consideration. Surprisingly, humans' unwarranted sense of intuition has often led to catastrophic accidents. The right approach lies in the assessment of a technology's catastrophic potential, followed by identification of potential improvements, restrictions, or complete abandonment. It is essential to learn valuable lessons from the past and have a calculated outlook towards the future of high-risk technologies, for the sake of posterity and the welfare of humanity.